just a quick disclaimer. I'm not a scientist or a researcher. I'm, a, I'm not even a GIS person. I'm just a guy that spent 30 years at the Austin Fire Department and uh, happened to find myself being the chief of staff for the last six years. And Christine, I'd like, like you to tell them just a little bit about yourself. Um, and so when I was working for the Austin Fire Department, I worked um, for the city of Austin for 24 years and I worked at fire for about 17. Um, I was the planner, so to speak, for the Austin Fire Department and managed the section that did the performance measures. But basically we would tell the fire department when they needed another fire station, where to place it and how it would impact response times. And also I just made a lot of maps, a lot of maps. <laughs> so how about, uh, how about those two previous presentations? Those were amazing, very strategic view. So we're gonna take you a little bit lower. We're gonna get down to the, the first responder and to the, uh, the end user. And we're gonna talk about, about flood inundation mapping, but a little bit of history about where we, we need to know where we came from and understand where we're going. So in 2013, I was the chief of staff when we had a, a, a Onion Creek flood in Hall on Halloween in Austin, Texas. About two o'clock in the morning, calls are trending down. We started releasing resources, thought we were just fine. About 4.30 in the morning, had a chief drive through a high-risk area. Everything looks great. At 5.30 in the morning, I had water in houses. 90 minutes later, I had 700 calls in the queue, five people dead. So why didn't we know? It's 2013, we should know these kinds of things. And one other point before I pass this to Christine, what you saw is that hydrograph up in the, up in the, the screen there, that's what the, the hydrologist and the weather service was giving us as a prediction. That doesn't mean anything to me. Right, and I was the GIS rep at the Emergency Operations Center that night, and Harry Evans is showing me this hydrograph saying, hey, they said it's gonna have, be 22 feet on Onion Creek. What does that mean? And I'm like, I, I don't know really what that means. So what we did is after that event, we went ahead and met with the flood managers and started to develop some hard copy maps that we were gonna put on the units and also at the EOC and with the battalion chiefs at the time that did exactly that. It basically created a common language between the fire service and the, high, and the, and the flood managers, which they could point to and say 22 feet, our you know, hydrograph is showing that, and this is what it looks like on the ground. But we knew we needed something better than a static map. So where we're going now is, is some level of interactivity because a static map is just a snapshot of a place in time. Where we work with the National Weather Service, it has minor, moderate, major flooding on there. But when we had Hurricane Harvey in 2017, it wasn't on any map. So we've got to have something that gives us a real-time look. What if you had a map that could give you a, uh, a snapshot of what's going on real-time? What if you had a map that could, could show you what a prediction looks like of this flooding and inundation? And so these are the things that we've been working on with all of our partners, including Esri. So let's talk about what a map can do for us. You get this weather service notice that there's going to be some flooding in your community, and it might look like this. It's generally very very general in, in, its, uh, in its appearance. It talks about county level warnings and things like that, but it's not down to the street and stream level. It's not to the specificity that you as a first responder or emergency manager might need to know. So you're a chief, you're emergency manager, you've got predictions of flooding. This is a sample of the other 100 questions that's in your head because you know that at six o'clock tonight there's gonna be flooding in your community. And as you begin to organize your thoughts and your response, you may look at some things that you'd wanna know right away, like when's it, gonna, when's it gonna hit and how much? Well, this hydrograph will probably help you answer those two questions, but what about the rest? Where do you get that data? Where do you get that information? So what if you had a map that showed you this? So if you had a map that showed you the level of inundation in that particular community, the number of houses, what neighborhoods, your access, your egress, can you get in, can you get out, do you have to set up shelters? It's amazing what that single map can do to answer those questions. There's no narrative there. It's a map, but it very quickly answers some questions for you. So here's a point that I wanna make, and I've been spending a lot of time over the last few years in retirement working with the, uh, the scientists and the researchers, and they wanna be very, very accurate, and I really do appreciate that because they're talking about centimeters, but it doesn't really matter for me as a, as a first responder. What matters to me is feet. So if you have one foot of inundation in your home, you're gonna be uncomfortable, you're gonna have a bad day, we're gonna get you out, but we will be able to get you out. If you have three feet of water in your house, then we're talking about high clearance vehicles, 
We're talking about we're getting to a point where you may not be able to walk out, but we can come and, and still get you and get you out. If you have six feet, now we're talking about boats and helicopters, and we did a lot of that during Hurricane Harvey. So we have six feet of inundation, means we're not at high clearance vehicles, it's boats or it's helicopters if we're gonna come get you. And then finally, nine feet. That means it's at your ceiling. And if you're in a single story house, that means you're on your roof. If you're in a two story house, you're upstairs. And we're sending a helicopter for you. The night the rain hit Beaumont from Hurricane Harvey, 24 inches fell overnight. We had over 85 aircraft in the, in the sky at that point because it was all helicopters. So the point I wanna make here is that, that depth is important, but it's important in these levels because I believe that my colleagues all sitting out here in the audience can work with that level of ambiguity. One foot, three foot, six foot, and nine foot. We don't have to wait till they can tell us how many inches. So that's the kind of, that's the kind of depth that we're looking at with this particular app. So, this picture right here is, is uh, Memorial Day Flood, 2015, Austin, Texas. In the lower right-hand corner of the picture, you can't see it, but there's a swift water rescue going on. And so imagine you're the incident commander talking to the EOC, some guy like me saying, hey, chief, how bad is it out there? And you have to describe that. But what if you were at the water's edge and you could, you, from your mobile device, drop a pin on that water's edge and it would illuminate that flood boundary almost immediately? And if you could do that, and at the same time, the Emergency Operations Center could see that, some questions get answered really quickly. The first responders know the scope and extent of the flood that they're working in. The emergency managers know how to support that and resource that event. And finally, it provides a common operating picture that the things that you're seeing out, out there on the, in the field are the same things you're seeing at the Emergency Operations Center. So what now I'm going to do is kind of walk you through how pen to flood can be used during an actual event. So first and foremost, as most of us know, large scale events happen at night, on the weekends or on a holiday. And for some reason in the city of Austin, it's all three. So this particular um, example is gonna start at 2 a.m. because that's kind of standard for us. So we've had a large rain event. We start to see flooding and the calls are coming into the 911 center. They dispatch a unit. And then, once that unit's on scene, they're able to take a firefighter, have them use a web access device, meaning a phone or a tablet, and drop a pin at the edge of the water. And they can even be back from a safety perspective, and because it's an aerial photo, they can move it to the big tree and drop it. And once they do that, instantly, they have a polygon that shows you the flood inundation of that area. But the most, and from here, you can actually calculate the number of homes, the population, and the, flood, or the roads that are flooded or are impact, impacted. But the best part is that this particular map is accessible in the field and at the EOC. So again, it's that common operating picture that allows for effective and efficient communication between the two groups. So where do we go from here with this pin to flood app? First of all, it's a, a prototype at the moment. So, We've kind of, our four next steps, we've kind of broken into three groups, kind of testing, data processing, and implementation. The ultimate goal is that we have implemented it and it's available to all fire departments or first responders or emergency managers across the nation. So from a testing perspective, what we've done so far is we did a recent um, HCEEP, HCEEP, that's what it is, uh, functional exercise in Travis County with uh, Travis County Fire Departments and the Austin Fire Department and the Emergency Management Group there. Um, what, we need, what we've learned from that is that the app works. The app is easy to use and they like it. They already were able to look at ways to do pre-planning and such with it. But what we know is that we need to go ahead and expand it outside of Travis County. We need to um, work with some smaller and larger fire departments and also really focus on emergency management. That was one thing that came out of that particular exercise is that we needed to have more of a, a, a test that was very focused on that um, group of individuals. The next is that we've actually processed all of the data for Texas, I believe at the 10 meter, right? And we're working yeah, so on- So the 10 meter digital elevation model has been done for the entire state. Mm -hmm. And then we're, there's a, a work in progress on automating this one meter LIDAR, which makes that, the result of that app very accurate. And, and we're getting some really good returns on that. But that process needs to be automated. And that's where the scientists and the researchers are working to be able to automate that process. 
And then, and then finally, our continued partnership with FEMA. Uh, we've, we've done a lot of work with them in the Texas Division of Emergency Management. So later this week, we'll be meeting with our FEMA partners, with the, the ESRI leadership, and uh, the, the TDEM folks, the Texas Division of Emergency Management folks, about how we might walk this thing forward. And then, of course, the implementation phase, which is working with state and federal groups to identify that process and, and how we might get the thing uh, in a sustainable atmosphere where it could be used by, by anybody. So just like our, our friends from Lebanon talked about, the level of collaboration is important. And there are a lot, there's been a lot of people involved in, in the work up to this point. Certainly folks throughout the state of Texas, but uh, our FEMA partners, the, the National Weather Service, the West Gulf River Forecast Center, who does the forecasting for the, uh, the Texas region, uh, all of our, all of our uh, emergency management folks, and, and most importantly, uh, our, our partners at ESRI, because without them, we would not have been able to get this far with it. So finally, our conclusions. And these are, these are some observations that we have made. Pinned to flood can, can take a single point and move that all the way up through the system, through the, the local, regional, state, and possibly FEMA. We have an opportunity to do that so that everybody's on the same page. Think about that common operating picture. But it can also inform actions real time in flooding. So that if you're a chief out there running an incident or you're the emergency manager watching it, you get a real-time snapshot of what's going on and how, how bad is bad. Because I know you want to know the answer to that question. And then finally, it gets to show how a national multi-jurisdictional uh, infrastructure could work. Uh, if we had been able to use this during Hurricane Harvey, think about the impact of that, that we could have had some real good real good intelligence about what things were looking like on the ground in all those different communities. That finishes our, uh, our presentation, and I will turn it back over to Ryan. Thanks, Chief. Yeah. All right.